Hi everybody! Today we are going to make shrinky dink keychains, but you don't have to use the keychain part if you don't want to. You can just play with shrinky dinks. That's fine. Um, you're going to have kits like this inside your bag. Each of them has a chain, a ring, a tassel, and some jump rings. This is your keychain hardware and your tassel. That's all fun. You don't need to do anything with this yet, but I'm just going to show it to you up close. Here's your tassel. Here's your ring with a chain. This is a clip if you want it. You don't have to use this part. If you do want to use that, just put it on your keychain real quick. Ta-da! It's on your keychain. Okay, we're going to come back to that. The first thing you want to do is gather your supplies. You have Sharpies. That's good. Maybe you want a pencil so that you can sketch out your design. Maybe you don't want to use a permanent marker and you want to use colored pencils because you feel like you have more colors of those. That's great too. What you want to do is if you have colored pencils, you want to use the rough side of your film, and if you're going to use the Sharpies I gave you, you want to use the shiny side of your film. This is Shrinky Dink Film. It is available on the internet. It's available at Michael's. It's available at a lot of crafty places. You can also, if you Google it, it's a certain number of plastic that you can recycle, like bakery containers. So if you get cookies at Kroger or Walmart or somewhere, you can save the container that it comes in and use this that to make more of this. But that is gonna be shiny on both sides, so you'll have to use a Sharpie for that. My camera's here, but my face is here, so I keep looking at the wrong place. I'm sorry. Shrinky dinks. When you do shrinky dink art, the thing you need to remember is it's gonna start out that big, and when you put it in the oven, it's gonna shrink by a third. So your six inch circle is gonna become two inch circle. It's a lot of shrinky in your dink. So whenever you make your art, if you make your art the size you want your keychain art to be, it's going to end up so tiny you can't see it. So you're going to want to make your art big. So I would kind of guess at least half the size of one of these to be a shrinky dink. So draw your art, make your art cool, I'm going to take a minute and do that, and then when I am done, I will show you our next step. Okay, I'm back. I went online, and I got doggy art that kind of looks like my dog, but not really. And I used that doggy art to make art that looks much more like my dog. So, what I did to get this was I taped this to the back traced it, colored some of it in, realized I didn't have the right color Sharpies to do it all, pulled this off, goodbye, flipped it over and used colored pencils on the other side to make sure that I had the art that I wanted. Now, I'm going to cut this out. When you cut out a shrinky dink, you don't want corners. Corners shrink and then they become pointy and when they become pointy, they become stabby. And you don't want a stabby keychain. Let me get my scissors. Scissors! Okay, I'm just gonna cut kind of a loose rounded shape around this. So, not like exactly a circle, but not exactly not a circle either. You'll see. You'll see when I get there. Doggy. My dog's name is Piper. She is seven months old. 
seven months old. Yeah, at the time that you're watching this, she'll be seven months old. So I've gone around and rounded my edges. There are a few little bits. If you feel like you maybe have a little point, you can clear up on yours. Um, it's not that big of a deal if you've got a tiny point. You can always sand it off too if you've got sandpaper at your house. I just want to make sure that when I have this guy done, it's comfortable and easy. Your next step is going to be making a hole in this so that you can put a jump ring through it. Now when you're doing that, you need a hole punch. There are lots of ways that you can hole punch this. You can go like that all the way in. You can go at the very tippy tippy tip. You don't want either of those. You want to go in a little bit, enough that it's not going to tear, um, but not enough that you're going to have trouble getting the jump ring on. Because the jump ring is only a certain sized circle, and if you have your punch all the way in and your jump ring is like that, it won't turn. I'll show you. So for my jump ring, I want to kind of make the hole like that. Just far enough in that it's in, like that's not going to tear real quick, but not super deep and not super, super close like that. Because that will tear or misshape and then this you just can't get your jump ring into. So you want to get in a little bit, but I wouldn't go more than a quarter of an inch. So now I'm going to do that on my actual shrinky dink. I'm kind of doing it like you could do it at the top. It would hang like that. You can do it in the middle. I'm going to do it between the ears. That's going to be about enough. It's hard to see here. That's going to be about enough. Um, and now you need your oven. I'm not going to show you the oven part, um, mostly because it's going to be super hard to film. I don't have a camera that can look in the oven. I just have opening the door and then trying to bake my phone along with the shrinky dink, so we're not going to do that. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to take your completed art, you're going to put it on parchment paper or a baking sheet, not on bare metal. Um, even like a piece of computer paper, I don't care. I've never tried computer paper. The Shrink Eating page says that. I would go for something like foil or um, parchment paper, not wax paper that will melt, not plastic wrap that will melt. Um, bake it about 325 until it curls all up in a ball and then wait 30 seconds and it should flatten out and when it's flattened out like that wait 30 more seconds then pull it out you don't want to wait beyond like once it's flat like that if you wait longer than 30 seconds then it'll start to burn so if it's got a little wonky side like we'll say a little curl there pull it out anyway take a spatula squish and within like 10 seconds it should be flat under the spatula um, and then you have your art. You can either bake all your art at the same time or you can bake a little bit here, a little bit there. You can do your keychain and then play with the rest of the shrinky dink stuff. It's up to you. So um, this is the shrinky dink I'm gonna go bake and when I'm done baking we'll assemble our keychain. I'm back. So remember we started with a shape like this. I baked it in the oven and now it's like a puppy. In fact, this is my puppy, Piper. I did her colors. So that's what my puppy looks like. I told you that already. So what happens when I do multiple clips? I don't have a script. Who has scripts? That's not cool. So we now have a little Sheltie charm there. You can do your initial, you can do anything you want. It's really fun and easy. And that's when you get out this little thing. Thing I told you not to care about yet. There are two little half open rings in here. Right now you just need one of them. This is called a jump ring. I don't know why they call it a jump ring. 
nobody's jumping. It's a little bitty, bitty ring. It's a circle. But the circle isn't closed. The circle is open, but the circle's kind of, it's not open like this, it's open like this. Like one is in front of the other. So when you close it, you don't want to squish. We're not squishing. When you close it, you want to use your pliers to push one arm towards the other arm so they meet in the middle. It's really hard for me to show you that with my arms. Um, so if you're confused, look up close jump ring on YouTube right here and somebody I'm sure has done a really good up close tutorial of how to do it that doesn't involve human arms but really you got a circle it's open you use your pliers and you boop let's do it from the side circle is open use your pliers to boop close it so ta-da we closed I know that was really stupid, but if it helped you, it was worth it. You need pliers. Needle nose pliers work. Other pliers work. Do you have pliers? I bet your parents do. Ask your parents if pliers are right for you. So I have a little chain on here. You have two options, really. Um, you can attach your tassel to the chain. Or you can attach your tassel, attach your tassel, attach your tassel directly to this. It's up to you. I think because my guy's longer, he's big. I'm gonna attach him directly to the chain. So put your shrinky dink on your jump ring. You should have enough room on there for it to do that. And then do the same thing with the very end of your chain. So they're both hanging on there like that. If you have two pliers, that's great. You can hold both ends of it. But if you're me and you don't have that at home, you can just brace it with one hand. I'm going to use two because I'm at the library. Here, the library, we have tools. Shockingly large amounts of tools. We don't, however, have two flat nose pliers, just multiple round nose pliers. So we're gonna have to make that work. I think what I'm gonna do is switch hands. Because that might be easier. Okay. We twist together. You just move one. Ugh, I hate I hate round nose pliers. That's why I told you to get needle nose and not to go to the store and buy round nose pliers. I really think they're horrible. But here we are with our round nose pliers. Okay. When you get close, which I am, it's not exact, but it's close. You can use your flat nose pliers or your needle nose pliers to just squish. So that's what we're doing. We are squishing here. And it doesn't have to be an exact, exact, exact circle. It just has to be close enough that nothing's going to slide out of there. And the way I have it now, can you see? Maybe nothing is going to slide out of this. So. The person that put this together didn't do a very good job. That wasn't me. See how they connected their jump ring to the second loop of the chain? And we have a dangly bit of chain? I can fix that. But for right now, here is my dangly puppy on a keychain. Now you want to do the same thing with your tassel. Stick it on the loop. You don't have to stick this directly on your key ring because the great thing about key rings is that they're split and you just slide it on later. So I'm just gonna close this jump rope. Jump rope, jump loop. I just have not had enough coffee today, guys. It's a problem.
Okay, that one closed a lot easier. I'm just going to squish it. Squish, squish. Now we're not squishing it like that, remember? We're squishing it flat to flat. Because we don't want to lose our circle. And once we've got that, you can just slide this directly onto your keychain. Or not, if you're me. If you're me, you can just drop it. That works too. I mean, whatever works, it's fine. There we go. Ta-da! Now, if you don't want your tassel on there, take it off. You don't need a tassel. If you like your tassel on there, but don't want to put this on there, you want to put that, like on earrings or a necklace or just on your counter. You can do that too. It's up to you. Now I'm going to open this other jump ring and the way you open a jump ring is just like the way you close a jump ring. You just twist it. Don't pull it apart. You twist. So we're going to do that. And the reason why I'm opening this up is not to get it off the ring, it's to get it on the right link of this chain. So now it's on the right link. This is how you close it without the other. You just twist it. You don't need to. Sometimes it's easier without to. Then you can just slide this back on your key ring just like you would a key. Anyway, there's Piper on the keychain, all ready to go. Now I just have to put some keys on it. If you've got questions, as always, you can email us at Wabash Teens. That's not right. That's the Instagram. You can DM me at Wabash Teens. You can email me at teens, T-E-E-N-S, at sign, Wabash dot lib dot in dot us I know it's long but that's okay that's why we've got the Instagram which is at Wabash Teens you can call a library and say hey Laura what do I do and that is 563-2972 or you can swing by and say please somebody tell me what I'm supposed to do and I'm good at telling people what they're supposed to do. Part of what I do here is tell you how to make crafts. So if you need help with your craft, I will tell you how to make your craft. Um, just give me a heads up and I will help out. If anybody's having trouble with last month's craft, which was the macrame plant holders, by all means, bring it by the library. Somebody asked me earlier this week if I would do a kind of Instagram-y or I don't know some kind of zoom tutorial if you want that just let me know and I will help you I am happy to do that now I'm going to take this apart because somebody's getting this tassel in their kit so um, you guys have a nice time crafting and I will see you next month